All right, hey guys, it's Rob from Team DBZ Biscuit here again with another uh, death profile. Today we're profiling a combination of probably two of the greatest milling decks ever. We are we're crossbreeding White Sworn with Burning Abyss. Sounds like a risky endeavor, but it's a lot of fun to play with. So let's start it off. To start it off, we start off with three Raikos. Raiko is the destroyer of White Sworn. For every time you flip him, you get to mill three cards and he gets to destroy one card on the field. And it's an actual optional effect, so if you don't, say your opponent has a Stardust Dragon and you don't want to destroy anything to get an activate Stardust effect, you don't have to destroy anything, but you just get to mill for free. The next is problem child number one of the Light Sworns, Lumina. Lumina's effect is amazing when you've got a Light Sworn of level 4 or lower in the graveyard, which you hopefully will be a Raiden or your Felice. You get to discard one card from your hand, which in this case, will, being a cross between Light and Darks, can be a Light Sworn monster or a Burning Abyss monster or a Plague Spreader zombie or whatnot. You know, get that second Light Sworn out and get the double milling effect or get, you know, potential uh, Synchro into Michael by using Raiden or Felice. Next on our list is uh, we run two Lilas, two Lilas just for that pesky little one one card in the back row possibility. Also, if you use the Lumina combo with a Plague Spreader, you could use Lumina to get Lila, pop the back row, activate Plague Spreader in the graveyard. Boom, you got yourself an instant trick. Next thing you know, you're banishing from hand, graveyard, and field. Speaking of Raiden, Raiden is here. We run three Raidens because Running three Raidens is excellent because A, he mills and he gains according to how many Light Sworns you mill in that turn. Also, he's a tuner. He's an instant into Michael. Or if you have a Michael on the field, you know, you know, bring out Mike. You have your Michael, you banish the cards. You bring out Raiden, you synchro into a Star Eater. And Star Eater, as we've learned, is a real fun card. Can't be negated. So if you can't stop him, you can't stop him the turn he summoned. You're going to be dealing with them for the rest of the game. We want run a one of on Felice and one of on Minerva. Minerva is nice because if she ends up in the graveyard by any way other than by battle, she mills one. And Felice will Felice is always good because you can special her with Lumina to pop up to activate Felice's effect. Pop a pop a face up card on the field and then mill three. And that's the uh, Lightsworn engine. But back in the day when we ran Lightshorns, we also ran a guy called Gores. Now, some funny stories about Gores. Um, Gores is awesome because, say somebody hits you with a 5,000 attack power Utopia of the Lightning, you drop a Gores, you get a Gores token that's 5K. And they're gonna have to deal with it. And uh, Gores is a level seven, so you can, you know, use him to synchro into other things such as a. Uh, you know, you can go into Stardust, you can go into a million different things with Gores. We run two Chaos Sorcerers because we run a, such a combination of light and dark monsters, and it's a heavy concentration of both. It's basically equal. It's really easy to get Chaos Sorcerer out here, and of course, you know, you get a Chaos Sorcerer out here, you banish a monster, you activate a Plague Spreader in the graveyard. You know, that's an instant Beals, which is also equals an, to an actual instant pain in the butt because it's Beals is just really broken in this new format coming out we get we run 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 one glow ball because milling cards to get one back to the field is just too much fun we want run one eclipse wyvern because when an eclipse wyvern is sent to the graveyard you can banish basically one of the two boss dragon monsters from the deck and get it out of play and then if he gets banished, you get to add that card to hand. Another boss monster in the deck, we run, run one BLS because BLS and banishing people stuff, especially when it's like a face down ancient stone of the legend, banish it. You know, won't be seeing that card again for a while. Another boss monster for the deck, Dark Arm Dragon. Though with all the milling going on, it's really hard to get Dark Arm to go off, but when he can go off, I mean, and you got things to, how would, I, how would you say, um, you can actually use other things such as Plague Spreader's effect to get him on the field. Say you have four in the grave, including your Plague Spreader, just, and you have Dark Armed in hand, just 
put one back, bring that plague spreader out. Now you got three, you drop dark arm, you just banish, 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 blow up their whole field, and just, it's just chaotic. It, it, it's really fun. It's a lot of fun to play. Um, again, Darkness Metal Dragon, along with a couple of Light Pulsars. Again, you bring it, you special a Light Pulsar, you drop, you special summon uh, Darkness Metal by banishing one. And then with his, with uh, Darkness Metal's effect, you can bring out any dragon from the graveyard, other than Dark Armed, of course, because Dark Armed has to be special summoned by three only. So anything that's in there, if there's another Light Pulsar, if there's a Dark Flare, if there's Beals, by some, say somebody, uh, oh, what's the card? The Monarch Tribute card. Um, Monarch Stormsworth. There's someone with Monarch Stormsworth through Beals. You can bring that Beals back out and he gets his effect. It's pretty, actually really silly. Everyone's favorite tuner, Plague Spreader Zombie. We run three of them. Just because we can make up to three Beals in a game. Konami hasn't done anything about Beals. We'll, we'll abuse Beals and make three of them in, in a game. And now we get into the Burning Abyss part. Plagues, um, we start off the uh, Burning Abyss engine with a tour guide from the underworld. Tour guide, easy enough. Special summon a Burning Abyss monster. Overlay into a Dante, mill three. And does good stuff. Barbar, Barbar is a great late game effect. You know, say you got your opponent down to 1900. You know, do a Barbar, banish three Burning Abyss monsters from your graveyard. You do 900, now they're down to 1,000. Uh, we run two, we run one Sir and one Graph because Konami wants it that way. Apparently that's their way of pu for punishing Burning Abyss is to limit, limit Graph and Sir to uh, one piece. That way you can't special up summon out of the deck or the graveyard. I run two Farfus because, you know, it's real fun to take someone's... Uh, a big problem child, a big problem child for this deck is our clear wing synchro or crystal wing synchro dragon, the one that negates effects. You know, if you want to bluff them, if you got BLS in hand, just think about this: if you have BLS in hand, you summon the Farfa, you special summon the BLS. Farfa's effect activates. He destroys himself. Farfa's effect attempts to go off. You target synchro clear wing. They're gonna have to negate it. But then, of course, you're standing there looking at the BLS now, and the BLS is going to remove it because he's only once per turn. It's an interesting concept, but it often works. Skarm is our searcher for the deck, and he's our final Burning Abyss monster. Skarm, when he's sent to the graveyard, will search out any any level 3 or lower fiend. And that does it for the monster lineup. It's a, As you can tell, it's a very monster-heavy lineup, and it's also a very balanced light and dark and as unusual as Rob decks may seem, we run no traps in this, so we're just gonna look at the spell cards real quick. We got the draw engine and then the Lord of Darkness. Draw two, banish one dark. Good stuff. This is my absolute in desperation card, soul charge. I have to be having a really bad game to use this card. Usually it's either MST or Twin Twister bait. But honestly, I don't like giving up life points and not being able to hit somebody with it. Um, I run the traditional Light Sworn build of uh, three solar recharges, drop the Light, light Sworn monster, draw two, mill two, you know, and it's, it's just good stuff. And our final spell cards, I think it's a 42 card deck, it's not out, out overreaching at all. Three charger light brigades, mill three, add a Light Sworn, usually your Lumina. Or if you already have Lumina, you grab Raiden, and it's it's just a combo base. It's a heavily combo based deck, but it's a lot of fun to play. I mean, that's we were playing it earlier today, and we had a we had an instance where I had nothing on the field. The manual had oh lord, I can't remember what the field looked like. It was three monsters and a set back row, and I I managed to bring out Black Rose Dragon and just like nuke the entire field. It was. It was a, quite the scene. Speaking of the extra deck, we are running the traditional Burning Abyss, three Dantes. Dante's great, He's it, it's a milling deck. Obviously guys, I don't have to really explain it more than once, it's Dante mills three every time. Not to mention 2,500 boost, I mean it's really easy to one turn kill. I won't say first turn kill somebody, 
because of the rule of no attacking during first turn, so it's an OTK deck possibility, an FTK deck not very likely. But three Dantes, and that's all I do for XCs. Everything else is synchro based. We run two Michaels. Michaels pay a thousand life points, banish any card on the field. We run one Black Rose Dragon because it's just when you're when you're in absolute desperation need, like a Soul Charge. Black and they've got a field full of cards, and you know they don't run Starlight Road. It's a great feeling to get to go off. We run we run one Trish because banishing from hand decking graveyard all in one turn is a lot of fun. We run one Stardust Spark Dragon. Spark Dragon can protect one monster on the field per turn from being destroyed. We run one Contaster for those people who like to run earth or water or anything that's not a dark. Contaster can only be destroyed by magic cards, trap cards, but also only by dark monsters. They can't be destroyed by light monsters, water monsters. You can't honest against the catastrophe. Well, you can honest against the catastrophe. They ain't gonna do you any good. I shouldn't say can't. Runs, I run one scra Scrap Dragon because activating Scrap Dragons affect targeting your Beals and then, <laughs> you know, it's ridiculous. It actually happened on Dueling Nexus. I Scrap Dragoned and I targeted my own Beals to pop his back row and he, the guy actually had the nerve to ask me why I wasn't Beals dying because Beals can't be destroyed. And yes, before we say anything, I, I know I don't have any Beals in the extra deck because I don't have any. <laughs> but uh, Crimson Blader, Crimson Blader is awesome because as long as you destroy something, your opponent can't special summon anything level 5 or higher, which is great against Synchro decks. Stardust Dragon, because I always need that one little security blanket of, you know, saying, okay, I'll negate that Dark Hole with Stardust. Or that Regeki, or Torrential Tribute, or anything. And my last Synchro, other than, I know I said Star Eater as well, I'm working on getting a Star Eater, and I'm also working on getting, getting the Beals. Orient Dragon, really underestimated card, especially when you go off against, say, say you're playing someone who's playing Synchrons and he doesn't get quite all the way to Quasar. So you bring out Orient Dragon and you banish, say you say you, he gets the Librarian and he gets the Librarian. You can banish the Librarian and then you can hit him for 23. You can banish Stardust Dragon, you can banish Scrap Dragon, you can banish... Um, you can banish Beals. I just thought it. You could use Orient Dragon to banish a Beals. Which is absolutely ridiculous when you consider Beals is a ghastly 3,000, 3,000 beater and he can't be destroyed in any way, so you just gotta work your way around it. But that is the deck build for the um, Mishmash Milling deck of the Millennia. Um, yeah, that, I mean, I play it, it's lots of fun. It is a lot of fun. If you guys are in the game for just fun, as a lot of our years are, this is a deck to play. This deck is so fun, it's not even funny. Um, the, the, the extra deck, very minimal extra deck, very low cost, very low cost deck to build. I mean, honestly, the highest priced card in there is probably the $16 Trishula. <laughs> but, um, yeah, but for, for those who don't know, you know, you know this, you know the drill. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, you know, and this is Rob from Team DBZ Biscuit, and I am out of here.